When I left on this trip, I had no idea about what was going to consume my time during the two weeks I was gone. As the trip developed, I became consumed with trying to figure out how to get one special, difficult drone shot. Now, this video shows the events that led up to eventually capturing this one 30-second shot. My trip started driving north of Los Angeles in freeway traffic. Then I took a side highway west to one of my favorite drone flying spots. It's a wide open span, a flat valley with vegetation no more than three feet high. I like to practice flying low trying to keep the drone flying in a straight line, even with a crosswind. Then I headed west again in the direction of the Pacific Ocean. First, there are low hills and then the coastal range of mountains. With the dense trees in these forests, you can see why in hot, dry weather, wildfires become a real danger. As the road began to wind down to the ocean, I spotted yucca in bloom up on the embankment. I followed the winding mountain road down. Fortunately, there wasn't much traffic on this back road. The ocean became clearer and clearer as I drove. The coastline and the waves are always a beautiful photography target when the sun is out. I was lucky and really enjoyed the sights. California has a gorgeous coastline. From here, I went home briefly, changed cars, and then drove up into the Sierra Mountains above Reno, where a high school friend of mine has a cabin. There's some beautiful country to explore here. This is a favorite of mine. Notice the railroad tracks on the left, the river in the middle, and the road on the right. I decided to fly down low, below the tracks, and see if I could fly upstream, following the curves of this, the middle fork of the Feather River. Well, that was exciting and fun. I went farther upstream and found a trestle bridge across the river. I don't know about you, but I'm always tempted to try to fly under a bridge. So, let's try it. This bridge offers other challenges. Its design doesn't allow for much misjudgment. It's narrow, only a one car at a time bridge. I couldn't resist giving it a try. Next, I went out to another favorite flying area. It has wide open, flat expanses with lots of low vegetation and no telephone poles and no traffic. 
and a couple of small bridges. The road itself is dirt, and you can see how much dust I can kick up driving at about 30 miles an hour. But it's fun to fly at a very low level and not having to worry about hitting anything. My drone, a DJI Mavic Air, has a built-in capability to follow an object, like a car. The object can't go faster than the drone can fly, about 15 miles an hour. As I was testing this feature, I started wanting to be able to fly the drone from way up high and then drop it down and end up looking into the car window. So this is the kind of shot I wanted to do. I don't know if a really good pilot could pull this off, particularly while driving the car at the same time, but I certainly wasn't able to do it. So I figured out a workaround. First, I positioned the drone in front of and just very near the driver's side of the car. Then I paused and went through my checklist. Put the car gear into reverse, get my right hand on the drone controls, wave, then simultaneously start the car driving backwards and use the drone controls to make the drone fly backwards and then up. That was kind of like patting your head, rubbing your stomach, and kicking a ball all at the same time. Now, when I got home, I reversed the direction of the video, put the video in reverse, and then I got this. I tried these several times by myself, and it was just too much to do it all at one time for me. On my way home, I enlisted the help of my friend Gordon, and he drove his car while I operated the drone controls, and we finally got what I thought was a really nice shot.